Okay, so in this question, we've been asked to work out the integral of 8x minus 12 over 2x squared plus 3 multiplied by x plus 1 integrated with respect to x. And when we substitute in the limits 0 to infinity, we've been asked to show that this is the length of k, where k is a rational number to be found. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to ignore the integral and I'm going to write this using partial fractions. And that will make it much easier to integrate later on. So we can write this as ax plus b over 2x squared plus 3 plus c over x plus 1. And then we need to multiply throughout by this denominator. So we get 8x minus 12 will equal ax plus b multiplied by x plus 1 plus c lots of 2x squared plus 3. Now we can eliminate this bracket by letting x equal negative 1 and that will make all of this equal 0. So when x equals negative 1 we get negative 20 will equal all of this becomes 0 and this becomes 5c. So the c term will be negative 4. And now to work out the a and the b terms, we can equate the coefficients. I'm going to begin with the coefficients of x squared. So the 0 x squared on the left hand side will be equal to the a x squared plus the 2 c x squared. We know c equals negative 4 and this becomes negative 8. We can cancel out the x squared terms, so a must be equal to 8. And now we can equate the x terms, so the 8x on the left hand side must be equal to the bx plus the ax. We'll cancel out the x terms, we know that a is equal to 8, so b must be equal to 0. And then we can substitute each of these values back into our partial fractions here. So the integral of our original function will be equal to the integral of our partial fractions. We're going to worry about the limits after we've worked out this integral. So now we'll split this integral up into this term and this term, because we need to integrate these differently. If we look at the first fraction, we can see you can use the reverse chain rule. Because when you differentiate the x squared, we get this x term. So if I write this out separately, we can bring this a out in front of our integral because it's just a constant. And then to work out this integral, if we say let y equal the natural log of 2x squared plus 3. When we differentiate this, we get dy by dx will be 1 over 2x squared plus 3 multiplied by the derivative of this inner function, which is 4x. So then we need to scale this so it looks like our original integral, which means we need to divide this by 4. So if we divide this by 4 and this one by 4, then you can see this division of 4 will make this 8 into a 2. So this will become two lots of the natural log of 2x squared plus 3. And because we're looking at logs, I'm going to bring this two up here to the power. Okay, so for our next term, we can pull this 4 out in front because it's just a constant. And then we can integrate the 1 over x plus 1 simply as 4 times the natural log of x plus 1. And again, because we're using logs, I'm going to bring this 4 up to here, the power. Okay, so if we rewrite this integral, and this will be equal to the first blue term, natural log of 2x squared plus 3 squared, minus, because of this negative here, the natural log of x plus 1 over 4. And we can simplify this further using the division rule of logs, and we can write it as a fraction. So this will be the natural log 
of 2x squared plus 3r squared over x plus 1 to the 4. And now we can consider our limits. We're told in the question we're using the limits of 0 to infinity, but we can't substitute in infinity because this will be undefined. But what we can say is if we integrate between 0 to t, where we set the limit of t tending to infinity, then this will become the same limits of 0 to t. And again, we need to state the limits. So as t tends to infinity. So now we can substitute in our limits. So the limit as t tends to infinity will be the natural log of 2t squared plus 3 all squared over t plus 1 to a 4 minus the natural log and then when we substitute in 0 this will become 0 and 3 squared is 9 and 0 plus 1 is 1 and 1 to a 4 is 1 so this becomes the natural log of 9 and we can evaluate this as the natural log of 2 lots of infinity squared plus the 3 but when we're dealing with infinity squared, this 3 becomes negligible. So we can eliminate this. We'll square our numerator. And then for our denominator, we've got infinity plus 1. This 1 becomes negligible. So our denominator is infinity to the 4. We can simplify this numerator. So we get the natural log of 4 times infinity to the 4 over infinity to the 4, and these two will cancel, so we've got the natural log of 4. So the limit as t tends to infinity would be the natural log of 4 minus the natural log of 9. And we can simplify this using the division rule, so this becomes a natural log of 4 over 9, so this k is 4 ninths. Okay?